Hello friends, welcome back to the SSJS dev series. In this video, we will look at how to get started with SSJS in Marketing Cloud. So just like how AMP script does, uh, SSJS also has a set of predefined functions available for Marketing Cloud, uh, which we can use. Now these are broadly classified into uh, core library functions or platform functions. Core functions are basically wrappers to the SOAP API objects in SFMC and are primarily used in non-message context like uh, cloud pages, landing pages, and script activity. Okay, But I've seen like you know, there, are, there are some exceptions where few core functions sometimes do work in a message context like email. So we'll definitely, like you know, as we go through future videos, we will come across some of those examples and we will definitely highlight them, right? But uh, as a broad uh, categorization core functions are primarily to be used in non-message context. Okay, the platform functions on the other hand can be used in message context like email, mobile, as well as cloud pages script activity as well. Okay, so they're more faster than core functions and they're somewhat similar to the counterpart functions in AMP script. Now, most of the times, uh, developers would prefer to use AMP script over platform functions uh, when they use uh, the message context like in uh, emails because AMP script is like pre-compiled. Okay, uh, JavaScript being more dynamic, like you no, know, it's not possible to like you know, have pre-compiled uh, option for that. Now, uh, if there is complex scenarios where um, you know JavaScript is better, then definitely developers have the choice to go with SSJS functions. Now, the core functions are definitely much more powerful because they have access to the SFMC SOAP objects uh, than. AMP script. So it's definitely prefer preferred over AMP script. So if you need to work with SFMC objects, um, definitely core functions is the way to go. And if, if you are using landing pages and script activities, definitely like, you know, uh, more than AMP script, like you know, core functions um, and SSGS has a lot of advantage in the, in the way that they, they're able to like, you know, access the, the SOAP uh, objects in SFMC. Now there's also the newer WS proxy object, okay, which is much more better in terms of performance than core functions, uh, especially if you're looking at larger or complex scenarios. And we'll definitely have future videos on, on these topics as well, okay? So uh, let me show you the core functions. Okay, as you can see here, uh, in the documentation, there's definitely core library functions. There's a, and they're all categorized into different areas. And you will see the platform functions as well. Okay, now besides that, like I said, there is also the WS proxy, which we will talk about in a future video. Okay, we will definitely go through some of these commonly used common library functions, core library functions, as well as the platform functions uh, in some of our future videos. Okay, okay so now um, let's see how do we write the SSDS code. Okay, so for that, we need the uh, script tag as the code block. Um, so those of you who have worked with JavaScript should already be familiar with the syntax, right? The only difference here is that you need to specify the run at equal to server option. Otherwise, it will default to client-side scripting. So if you um, omit this run at uh, parameter here, if you just simply use the script tag, it will default to client-side scripting and not uh, server-side, okay? Uh, there's three more optional parameters for the script block, okay? So one is language, and here you can either specify JavaScript or AMP script, then default is JavaScript. So if you omit the language key, uh, the parameter here, it will always default to JavaScript. But if you want to specify AMP script, uh, like, you know, then you have to specify language equal to AMP script. For SSGS, definitely we are using JavaScript, so you can just uh, omit that. So you only need to have run at equal to server. Now execution type context, uh, it has two values uh, that you can actually pass to it. It's either get or post. Now execution context is a method of the uh, HTTP request made to the server. So by default, this will be actually get. Okay. And uh, execution context name, it sets a name for the script block that you're creating. So if this parameter is set, then the block will only be executed when this request context contains this name, else it will not load. Okay. So this is quite useful when you want to execute or exclude a block based on certain conditions, like you know, using that name of that block. Okay. So just to summarize, uh, for most of your use cases, when you want to use an SSJS code block, you just need to use the script tag and use run at equal to server. You don't need to worry about all the other parameters. This is just for your knowledge purpose. We just uh, shared that here. Okay. Okay. So now uh, let's see how we can use the core and the platform function. So we, we saw the in, a pre, in the previous slides uh, about the core and the platform functions, and we saw the documentation for them as well, right? For platform functions, you can directly call them using the prefix platform.function. Okay. 
okay so if there is a function called write in uh, in platform functions you know, the way you access it is platform dot function dot write and then whatever parameters need to be passed to that function you can do that so here write is somewhat similar to the output or like you know when you want to print something out to the the screen uh, you can use the write function so if i'm using the platform function it will be platform dot function dot write and then if i put this string here it will actually put that into the uh, display okay now if i want to use the core library i have to use first load it because core is an external library like that is built in into sfmc that you have to load okay so you have to specify platform dot load and you have to say core and then you have to give the version number so keep in mind um, that you only need to load the core one time like you know at the the core library at the one time at the very top uh, if you do that, then you can continue to use all the core functions uh, throughout that script block. Like you know, you don't need to like you know keep redeclaring platform dot load core every time, right? So you can just load it at once, and then you can keep using all the core functions. So in this particular example, I have write uh, also under the core library. So here you can see like I don't need any prefix for that. So if I use platform dot load, uh, and if I'm loading the core library, I can use the write function, um, and then directly give the uh, the value for that uh, function right so in this particular example you, it just happened that you know write is there in for both for platform dot uh, sorry for platform functions as well as for the core it doesn't mean that all functions are there both in the core library as well as the uh, the function the platform functions okay so uh, there may be a lot of functions that is in core library that's not available in platform functions and vice versa okay so we'll definitely look at that in, in some of the future videos now with respect to the uh, the version numbers uh, for the uh, the core library right that's the second parameter that you see here uh, so you can specify the version number of the uh, the core library that you want to load so it can be the 1 1.1 1 1.1.1 1.1.2 .1, 1.1.3 .1 .1 .1 .1 etc there's there's multiple versions that are available uh, but the safest way to like you know load the latest uh, version uh, without having to know okay what's the latest version is if you use one Right. So what happens is like, you know, let's say you have uh, 1.2 as the latest version. So if I use one, then automatically it brings me the latest version under uh, the version one. Right. So if they if the 1.3 is launched tomorrow, if I still use one, there is no problem. But if version two is launched, then that will not be available. So you need to make sure like, you know, everything under one, uh, the latest one will definitely be fetched. But if version two is getting released at some point in time, then you need to change your core libraries to two to in order to reflect that okay okay so now um, we um, like you know let's look at a little bit about inline ssgs so previously we saw how to write the code in an ssgs code block right but if we what if we wanted to use some uh, ssgs value inside our html similar to how we use inline am script so this is where we have the option for inline ssgs and there are three tags that we can use for inline ssgs so first is the control field which we uh, using which we can display a subscriber attribute or a data extension field then there is control var with which we can display an ssjs or an amp script variable and finally we have the control eval which which can used to be uh, evaluate a set of javascript code or an expression okay there are also four attributes for these control tags okay so that's first one is name and it's used to identify the subscriber attribute, the data field, or the variable. Uh, and it's it's required when we are using the control field or the control var tags. Okay. Now, language is optional. Um, like you know, I mean, by default, it it uh, defaults to like JavaScript. So you can omit the parameter if you are using it for SSJS. But if you are using it for AMP script, then you have to specify it. Like you know, so the values for language here again, like how we saw in the script tag, it's either AMP script or JavaScript. For SSJS purposes, since we are going to be using JavaScript, we can just uh, you know omit it and it will default to JavaScript. Now, default and format are two the additional attributes. They are also optional. So default is if you want to specify a default value for like you know the data that is being shown. If let's say if that if you're, let's say you're fetching an attribute or a, or a data field, and if it turns out to be null or empty, and if you want a default value to be shown, then you can use the default parameter. Okay. And format as well, if you want to specify particular formatting for the output value, you can use the format uh, parameter. Now let's look at a few examples like, you know, for the control field uh, tag, right? So you can uh, use it to display uh, a subscriber attribute like subscriber key, or you can even use it to like, you know, display a data extension field like customer ID or first name. And in this particular case, like my first name is null or empty, uh, I have it defaulted to the customer string, right? So 
if i want to like you know show like you know hello uh, first name or if i if the first name is not there i can say hello customer right so this is quite useful in that way uh, control var uh, it is used to like you know access uh, any of the variables that we have declared in our code block so it could be either the ssjs variable or it could be an amp script variable so if it's an amp script variable you have to ensure like you use the at the rate uh, symbol to distinguish that and here again you can use the default uh, uh, the parameters for default and the format as well finally we use the control eval so this one is quite powerful because you can use it to evaluate a javascript function uh, expression or even a block of code as you can see from these examples right and if it's a single expression then you can omit the return keyword uh, else you need to include that as uh, because the eval function expects a value to be returned and displayed so you can see here like you know i've omitted the return statements here um, if i want i can still include like return my string dot uh, to upper case uh, but in this particular case when i have multiple statements i need to explicitly return the final value that i want to be shown as part of the uh, control eval tag okay so that's all we have uh, for this video folks hope this was helpful uh, do subscribe to get updates on our future videos and thank you for watching